hell has uh, is imposed on the text in in many tra you know uh, traditional translations, but also throughout the history of the use of the word or its equivalents in other languages as a sort of portmanteau into which we fit concepts that in, in the actual original text are, are clearly distinct from one another. The two most conspicuous of which are the Gehenna, of which appears with one exception only in the preaching of Christ in the Synoptic Gospels, and Hades, uh, which are you know two very different things. Hades is, of course, the realm of the dead. Uh, Sheol in, in Hebrew, Hades in Greek, uh, a, a vision of the afterlife that almost all ancient and, and late antique persons believed in, and all of Greco-Roman religion, including Judaism, which would fit into that category of Greco-Roman religion in, in, the, in the first and second centuries, had some concept of, and the concept was not a, a place of punishment as such, although there were punishments there for the very wicked, uh, but simply a place where both the righteous and the wicked uh, persist in a kind of shadowy half-existence or in a condition of, of even bliss after death, awaiting what happens next, whether that be, say, rebirth in some platonic cycle of reincarnation or the final judgment in apocalyptic Judaism. In the, in the uh, book of Luke, for instance, uh, both uh, the rich man and Lazarus are in Hades. This is not a, that's not a parable about the ultimate end of creation. It's, it's about the afterlife that just about everyone in the ancient world believed in, in a place usually situated under the earth, whether uh, one was good or, or wicked. And the picture that you get in the Gospel of Luke is largely taken from the Book of Enoch, I believe, in which there's a, a you know, a place of rest and, and refreshment and, you know, green hills and flowing streams for, for Lazarus or those whom uh, God is relieving of, of from the sufferings of this life, and then there are places of, of correction or atonement or torture, or what, however you wanted to imagine them, for the very wicked. But none of that was understood as, as uh, a final destiny or, or a univocal sort of sentence passed on, on a soul. It's, uh, Hades is simply a, a kind of myth of, about the afterlife to which all persons no matter what their stations go, except for perhaps a few heroes or a few prophets or a few saints who ascend to God's heaven instead. Um, then there's the Gehenna, which is the Valley of Hinnom, which figured large in prophetic literature as an image of God's wrath within history generally when, um, you know, it was... Uh, you know, a place of slaughter, a place where the armies of Israel uh, will be defeated and their corpses uh, deposited to be uh, burned or devoured by worms, hence the imagery from Isaiah of fires that never go out and worms that, that, that never die. It doesn't act, it's not, again, it's not a picture of an eternal afterlife. It's a very specific image of a place where uh, the remains of the dead uh, are placed and entirely consumed by fire or carrion eaters, maggots, whatever. And it became an image of God's judgment, God's wrath, that uh, in the apocalyptic period went through an incredible number of uh, variations. Precisely how Christ uses it in, in the Synoptic Gospels, it's hard to say. He speaks of it as a place where both body and soul, or, or body and the life, the breath, can be destroyed, so it is an image of rejection. But again, it's not an image of some eternal rejection, an eternal imprisonment in a place of conscious torment. It's just that within the horizon of history, it's a you know it's it's a place of rejection, judgment, and of course that brings us to the question of how many of Christ's reported prophecies actually concern the ultimate end of creation and how many are, are merely concerned with imminent historical events on the horizon as a result of the growing tensions 
between Israel, between Judea and Rome. Then there's just one more word that doesn't even appear as a substantive in the New Testament, uh, but is, a, is a, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, strange verbal form, and that's Tartarus. And that, again, a Greek word, but it's referring, again, to specifically a place mentioned in the intertestamental apocalyptic literature as a place where the spirits of the Nephilim, that is the demonic children of angels and the daughters of men were imprisoned until the day of judgment. It has nothing to do with human beings at all. And it's just mentioned in passing. So nowhere in that continuum do you have anything that corresponds to the image of hell that fixed itself in later Christian imagination. And certainly these are three distinct concepts that shouldn't be referred to under a univocal term as they are say in the King James, where you wouldn't know when, whether Paul, when he says, you know, when, he, when he speaks of Hades, it's translated as hell. And when Christ speaks of the Gehenna, it's translated as hell. And yet these are two vastly different concepts, uh, not really related to one another at all, neither of which is is the image of of you know of 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 Satan's everlasting torture chamber or God's since in the traditional view the difference between God and Satan is simply one of um, executive and deputed powers. <laughs>